Hello, I'm Holly Lee Knox with SFGov TV. Along with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco, I'm here to discuss Proposition E, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 4th. Proposition E would place a tax of two cents per ounce on sugar-sweetened beverages to fund health, nutrition, physical education, and active recreation programs. A sugar-sweetened beverage is a beverage that contains added sugar and 25 or more calories per 12 ounces. The tax would also apply to syrups and powders that can be made into sugar-sweetened beverages in a beverage dispensing machine, such as fountain drinks. The distributors of sugar-sweetened beverages in San Francisco would be responsible for paying the tax. Some beverages would not be subject to the tax, even if they contain added sugar. These include diet sodas, milk, soy milk, rice milk, and almond milk, beverages that contain only natural fruit and vegetable juice, infant formula, meal replacements, supplemental nutrition products and weight reduction beverages, and syrups and powders sold for mixing by individuals to make sugar-sweetened beverages. The San Francisco Unified School District, Department of Public Health, and Recreation and Park Department must use the proceeds of this tax to fund health, nutrition, physical education, and active recreation programs. The funds must be used only for new or expanded programs. Up to 2% of the tax proceeds can be used to administer the funds. A 15-member Healthy Nutrition and Physical Activity Access Fund Committee would advise the Mayor, the Board of Supervisors, and City Departments about how to spend the funds. Because the proceeds from the tax are dedicated to specific purposes, approval of this measure requires two-thirds of the votes cast. If you vote yes, you want the city to collect a tax of two cents per ounce from the distributors of sugar-sweetened beverages to fund health, nutrition, physical education, and active recreation programs. If you vote no, you do not want the city to collect this tax. I'm here with Christina Gutta, public health advocate and parent and a proponent of Proposition E. We're also joined by Nick Panagopoulos, campaign manager for the Coalition for an Affordable City and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. We'll start with opening comments, beginning with you, Christina. Thank you. Well, in the 1980s, San Francisco General's Ward 80 was filled with HIV patients. And that is no longer the case. That ward is now filled with patients that have diabetes and are suffering the consequences. As the largest added source um, as the largest source of added sugars in the American diet, sugary drinks are driving this epidemic of type 2 diabetes. In San Francisco, sugary drinks are costing us about $60 million a year based on the budget analyst. And we know based on the tobacco experience and Mexico's recent soda tax, soda taxes that are designed to reduce consumption, they work. And a tax would reduce consumption by about 31%. It would also be raising funding for school food and PE, more water filling stations, awareness campaigns, and much more. I know it seems innocuous, drinking a soda, but that's what people thought 50 years ago about tobacco. And the research is very clear, um, if, as long as it's not industry funded, that sugar-loaded drinks are linked to chronic diseases and premature death. Thank you. Nick, your opening comments. Thank you very much for having us here today. So I absolutely agree with the proponents of this measure that uh, we have a serious community health problem. And I think that we actually share the same end goals, which is to reduce obesity and to reduce diabetes. And it is a problem here in San Francisco that needs to be addressed. Unfortunately, Proposition E is going to do absolutely nothing to address any of those problems. Proposition E, I would consider it to be a Band-Aid solution to a very serious and complex <coughs> issue. And the way that the legislation is written, I don't actually believe that it's going to have any success in reducing consumption. And let me tell you why. It's because it's not a point of sales tax like a cigarette tax is. So when a consumer of cigarettes goes to buy that product, they know for sure that there has been money added on to that product in the form of a stamp and an added fee that we have here in San Francisco. It's not the case for the sugar sweetened beverage tax. Um, it's set up as a distribution tax, which means that local business owners would be able to pass the added costs along to all of the products that they sell, not just beverages. Thank you. Uh, a few questions. Will passage of this measure impact healthcare expense in San Francisco? 
Let's start with you. Well, yes, absolutely. Um, what we know is that um, attacks like this is projected to prevent 240,000 cases of diabetes, 100,000 cases of heart disease, 8,000 cases of stroke, 26,000 deaths. How could that not impact our healthcare costs? If we're preventing this by decreasing consumption of sugary drinks, we know that it will. And um, we, again, we turn to the tobacco experience that not only has the tobacco experience um, taxes decreased smoking, but it's also decreased um, cancers related to smoking. So what we know is that if we make it more expensive and we promote the healthier alternatives like tap water, um, people will be able to do that. They'll make healthier choices. And we saw in Mexico that their tax that was passed in January, only in January, and already about eight months later, they've seen a 10% decline in sales of sugary drinks and a 7% increase in healthier alternatives. So we know that it can work and that it would work. Nick, how do you respond to that? Well, I would just say that all there are studies on both sides of the issue, and they've been sponsored by people who support measures like this and people who oppose it, uh, including the, the industry. And some of them say that they will actually lead to a reduction in consumption, and others say that they won't. But the problem is, with this particular measure, is all of those studies are focusing on a specific point of sales tax. And as I mentioned, this tax is unfair because it's set up as a distribution tax. So local corner stores are able to disperse the cost amongst everything they sell, which in San Francisco at this time is something that we really can't afford to do. Our city is facing an unprecedented crisis in affordability, evictions are going through the roof, the prices of muni passes are going up, the water bills are going up, the garbage bills are going up, and the last thing that we need is, is city government making our grocery bills more expensive. The other piece of that is stores on the other side of the equation, the big chain stores, who get their products directly from big distributors are gonna have the purchasing power to negotiate the pricing down directly from the distributor level. And it puts our small businesses at a disadvantage. Um, and frankly, if I thought that this was going to work and to help stop diabetes and reduce obesity, two worthy goals, I wouldn't be here uh, campaigning for it. Will this measure have a differential impact on citizens of the city based on income? Let's start with you, Christina. I know that they like to say that it will have a differential impact, and it absolutely will. Um, it will insofar that the funds will be dedicated to addressing the health inequities. Um, the communities that are drinking the most sugary drinks are, tend to be the more low-income communities. They are the ones that are most targeted by the industry as well with advertising and marketing. And so the committee that would be set up to govern the funds um, would, is charged with ensuring that those communities get better access to recreation, that they get better access to um, drinking water. Um, and water stations, um, and that the community-based organizations serving those communities will be positively impacted with the revenues from this uh, measure. Great. What are your thoughts, Nick? So yeah, the proponents definitely recognize, the city controller has recognized that this is a regressive tax, and they're doing it that way on purpose. And I just think that that's, that's really unfair to our low-income communities here in San Francisco that are already struggling, that are already getting squeezed out of the city, and that already have many things that they have to deal with on a daily basis that others don't. And this just adds another burden on top of all of that. Um, in addition to being uh, a regressive tax, like I said before, I, I think that this is a Band-Aid solution to a very serious problem. And we should have an adult conversation in San Francisco about how to achieve uh, the end goals of what this proposition is. The funding, the $50 million that this will raise is great. Uh, I support many of the programs that this is going to uh, fund in the school department and the health department. I just think that taxing low-income people isn't the San Francisco way. We should come up with more of a progressive tax to fund these programs. We've got big, uh, big Fortune 500 companies located in the city. There's a lot of wealth here in the city, and we've got some of the best political minds on the Board of Supervisors and in City Hall. And I'm sure if we all come together at the table, we can come up with a way to take money from those who have it and spend it on those who don't with the same, same aim of contributing to community health. Well, really great food for thought on both sides of this issue. Uh, let's talk final thoughts. Uh, we'll begin with you, Nick. <clears throat> 
Well, first of all, thank you for having us. We appreciate the opportunity to get our point of view out there. I'd just like to ask the people of San Francisco to vote no on Proposition E. We believe it's unfair, it's unnecessary, and it's a little condescending uh, to the voters uh, in the city. There are things that we can do that contribute to community health and a Band-Aid beverage tax solution that covers hundreds of beverages, even some things that you wouldn't think of, like low-calorie green teas and certain types of fruit juices. 100% juice is exempt, but a lot of the juice that low-income people are able to buy isn't actually 100% juice. Those are all covered in the, pro in, the, uh, in the proposal. And another interesting thing about the proposal is uh, macchiatos, cappuccinos, lattes, frappuccinos from Starbucks, uh, if they're made behind a counter and served to a customer, all of those are exempt. So I just don't think it's right to say to the people of San Francisco that a 500 calorie frappuccino isn't okay with you, isn't okay, but a 200 calorie soda uh, is not okay. Uh, that's just not the case. Thank you. Thank you. And Christina, your final thoughts? Sure. The opponents love to talk about the doom and gloom scenarios of what's going to happen. The tax isn't going to cost jobs. Corner stores aren't going to go under. We saw this again with the tobacco tax. I see corner stores in every neighborhood I go, and they're thriving. Um, the San Francisco grocery workers, they're supporting this because they know there will always be beverages to stock. They love to say, the opponents love to talk about regressive. And really, what's regressive is the fact that Coke and Pepsi, they spend, they, they produce a product that is known to be, uh, causes chronic diseases and leads to premature death. They spend billions of dollars marketing that product. That's regressive. If people can't afford the 25 cents extra on a can of Coke, they're probably not going to be able to afford diabetes. And that's really what we're paying for in San Francisco right now when we're spending $60 million on healthcare costs. We want to support people to make healthier choices and make the healthy choice the easy and affordable choice. And that's what this is about. Thank you, Christina. And thank you both for your comments and your time. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelection.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 4th.